Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back to an oddball angle, that's for sure. Um, this is my painting, not really a tutorial, but it's my painting of how I'm going to do my death guard. Most notably, um, the Terminators. Uh, sorry about if they uh, appear out of angle, out of frame. Um, I'm still in the process of trying to set everything up. Um, so please bear with me. Um, <laughs> it, it's just awkward trying to uh, set everything up and keep everything in frame at the same time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this angle light. And so we're going to start off with some Mort, Fire, Mort Fang Brown. Uh, I'm going to use this. It's actually quite a thick paint. So I'm going to put it on my wet palette. Well, apparently, spread on the barrel of my gun, which is something I didn't want to do. But uh, I'm going to start painting the tabards. Because I'm going to do these in a leather color. I'm going to do these in two thin coats. to get a hundred percent opacity straight away and again guys I'm sorry for the blurry camera let me try and fix that real quick adjust the focus and as you can see it's going to take two or three coats so I'm going to move on to other parts like the shoulder up here Ooh. still getting used to this plinth actually so uh, I've been a uh, Quite busy of late, hence this is why I'm doing this video. Really uh, late at night. Okay. That's that. Now we're going to get the bottom tabard down here in between his legs. Again, I'm going to be doing two, maybe three thin coats of this and these are new brushes that I'm trying that were a Christmas present from my girlfriend so I'm not quite used to holding them I'm used to being very high up on the brush when I paint um, these are designed to be uh, held further back than I normally do and so I'm having to constantly readjust my hand position to make it more comfortable. And so uh, all I'm doing is just, as you can see, I'm just filling in the, the leather. There is the strap on the weapon because the weapon is apparently lashed to his arm. 
and so I'm just trying to be as neat as I can I'm not looking to uh, Trying to be neat again. Multiple thin coats. Thin. Tad busy. Sadly, to the point where I couldn't even stream on Twitch. Um, I am. I do still play video games, of course, but I've been so busy trying to find a job that it's almost become a full-time job trying to find a job. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, the current economy here in the UK is not the best. palette here to keep my brush still going so I've got this little tab on right there don't be afraid to move the miniature there we go and as you can see the weapon is actually lashed to his arm here so we're gonna extend that down and this is going to take two thin coats for sure all right so while we're waiting on that to dry the front tab art is dry now so we're gonna hit that with second coat richer brown now now we could once we're happy with it go over it real quick with um, Agrax Earthshade to darken it um, or we can go with contrast dark oath flesh um, which is what I'm probably going to do I used to hit my leathers with flesh wash, old school flesh wash. You can't get any more. Um, and then go back over with the primary color. And then ultra highlight it with um, a much lighter brown. But then GW went and changed the names of most of the paints. Nice one, GW. They tried to put out a guide of, of, oh, this color is now called this, and, and, and yeah. Painters like me are like, nah. Why is there like 12 different blacks when they just used to be chaos black and um, whatnot? Now there's a, a black Templar shade. I'm like, so black templar shade is that just like basically a black ink no 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 it's a shade so what's the difference you know okay so again we just we're just blocking in the primary color all we're doing now I know this generation of Terminator armor is from the uh, an older crusade hence that's why it's got the tassels it's very 30k mark 2 mark 3 
um, Terminator armor. And so, just making sure that we've got a nice even coverage in all the places that we need it to be, which we have. Except for the under part, the tabard on this side. <coughs> Again, models are 3D, which means you've got to come at it from all angles. Again, I'm used to a plinth. My normal plinths that I use are old, like, dumbs, like I said, they're much bigger for my giant claw hands. I mean, you should see what I'm saying. I'm used to holding such a bigger plinth more than this little tiny thing. And so we're going to just finish up some parts. And what I'm going to do is probably go through the entire model now and the areas that I'm going to do black, I'll do them now. So I'm looking at the chain mail down here. Uh, some of the pipes around his face, the weapon, some pipes on his back, um, in between his legs, the knee and hip joint. Yep. So I'll do that next. Gonna get the paint a bit of a shake. Sorry about shaking the camera. There we go. Again, we're just gonna take a big whack of it and put it on our wet palette. And what I'm gonna do is hit the chain mail. Now I do happen to have Vallejo Game Wash uh, dip, but I'm not going to use that because every time I've used it, it's had a bit of a weird sheen to it, and I'm not a big fan of that, so... Of course there's a little fly. Two coats of that. 
of the miniature. And that way the miniature is supported. And your paint. So if I'm going out of, out of frame, didn't want to do that. I'm still trying to get all the kinks out of this um, setup, guys. I do apologize. I'm going to leave the teeth to stone cold last because there's a lot of them on the, on the model. So I'm going to leave it till last. Alright. I think that's the majority of the areas that I want black. dry now because the black's going to take a while so we're going to go back to the leather and then this time I'm going to add a bit of XV88 so we can give it a shake do is I'm going to put it on the palette and do a 50-50 mix so we've got a bit of a more darker can see a difference in it. It's just a lighter tone. And what I'm doing is just laying it down so that when I hit it with the wash and go right back over it, it's going to pop. You see a 
contrast difference between his right shoulder and the left one. coverage, doesn't matter if we do 10 layers or 2 layers, we'll get the coverage. It's about patience. That's all, just patience. I know some of you don't have the patience, but you know. The one thing Bob Ross said he learnt through painting was patience. Bob Ross can do it, so can you. I can choose to either use this contrast darker flesh or I can use Agrax Earth Shade on the leather. If I use Agrax Earth Shade, it will make it a little bit more blacker than normal. But if I use this one, again, I'm actually going to put it on my wet palette. And in fact, I'm actually going to use a bit of contrast medium as well. So, there we go. So that's really watered it down. And then so now all I'm gonna do is just drag it across. And this is gonna take about half hour to dry, guys. So once you've done this, you know, go have a cup of tea or an adult beverage. Go snuggle with a girlfriend, boyfriend, your cats, your dogs, whatever. Whatevs. Go play some Dawn of War. Heck, even play some Escape from Tarkov. It doesn't matter. Just. This is going to do is going to highlight and give the leather a, a bit more life to it. And to differentiate between this leather and this leather, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use straight from the pot and I'm just going to go dab. And you're going to see a tone difference because the more layers you use the stronger it gets okay. you can already see the browns changing then we're going to go straight in with probably pure XV88 once this is dry. Okay guys, and I will probably see you in next video. Where we will be uh, hopefully probably putting some, uh, some bronze on the miniature. and Yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did guys, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you all on Twitch. That's twitch.com slash Until then guys, 
Take care, and I'll see you on the tabletop. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, part two of this video, and what I'm going to do is gonna finish up some work on the back here. I did miss a couple of cables on the back, then I'm just going to get at it right now. Miss these cables on the back. Now it's going to take a couple of spin coats. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Um, especially on the leather right now, because again, I'm going to go through and I'm going to. Um, a wash on the leather but not till I've added the uh, silver and the bronze <clears throat> so I'm just gonna come in here real quick and get a and I'm gonna need a couple of spin coats Just want to use the tip of the brush. There we go. Now we've got these cables down there. I'm only going to do the one. This one. The other cable, I'm actually going to paint that differently. So I can be messy with it right now. of thin coats again this noble uh, terminator is going to be uh, in my army so now normally <coughs> again normally I don't paint like this I'm painting like this for the video for you guys as well as to maybe look at streaming on twitch painting a few miniatures all right so I've got I'm gonna touch up this one here about the teeth because the teeth are going to be the very last thing that I paint. Okay, so that's that. I do have a cup with some water in it. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm actually going to work on the bronze. And so I've got a couple of different bronzes here. In fact, I'm going to grab all the metallics right this second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you the contrast of, of how I do my metallics. I'm going to start off with some Balthazar gold and then hit it with a wash to darken it. Then I'm going to hit certain parts of it with this Retributor armor. And then maybe a little bit of um, Iron Breaker. And maybe finally a highlight of Ring Fang Steel. Just got to shake these paints up a bit. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to put the cap back on the black now. There we go. So I'm going to start off with the Balthazar Gold. I'm 
again, doesn't hurt to always have a wet palette. I did add some uh, flow improver, some uh, artist acrylic flow improver to my metallics to get them to flow a lot better. And uh, so yeah. So what I'm going to do now is just get some of the metallic, put it on the wet palette. And then I'm just going to start at the bottom and work my way up the miniature. Okay, so. I'm going to start by looking at uh, this knee here. Try and be as neat as you can. Like so. Again, I'm just using the tip and the side of the brush. And we are going to be washing this selectively later I know a lot of artists have an issue using Citadel metallics they usually either complain that there's not enough coverage or it's too thick or they, they always complain about something and the truth of the matter is GW may rename rebrand their paints but the fact of the matter is is they don't have control over the paint manufacturing process they don't own their own factories so they outsource it to another company and it's that company now this is where i've got to concentrate a little bit um and so it's those companies that are the ones that can produce you know 300,000 bottles of Balthazar gold but not all 300,000 bottles will be the same Balthazar gold they'll have the same uh, pigmentation they'll have the same um, chemical composition well try to anyway but <clears throat> where the fact that I worked in a factory we tried to make the same product you know, we use the same ingredients in every product that we make. So, for example, I mean, I worked in a deli factory, so we made sandwiches and soups and, and dips and pizzas and, and wraps. And, you know, so we, we try to use the same ingredients for every wrap. But we know deep down that not everyone's going to get the same amount of chicken or the same amount of lettuce or the same amount of mayonnaise. And so the same goes with paints. Um, some paints you're going to get are going to be thicker or thinner than the pot right next to it because it's how the paints are manufactured it's how they're produced it's how they're they're made um it's nothing personal you know it's not like they're purposely saying oh we're going to make this paint for you know awesome paint job les and so we're going to make it extra thin or but this pot's going to danny so we're going to make it extra thick you know that that's not what games workshop do all right so now i've got to concentrate a little bit because we're getting into a bit of the nitty-gritty um lines here so Again, don't worry about the teeth because the teeth are going to be one of the last things on this miniature that we're painting. I'm just trying to concentrate on my line control. Right, this second, if need be, go to a smaller brush. 
if you have to. And I've also got to do uh, the orbs on the back up here. But I want to leave the recess details as they are. So I'm also going to try and leave the smoke as it is because I have I'm going to try a new paint style on that smoke so I'm going to try and keep them in the picture frame for you guys I do apologize if I go off frame but like I said this is the first time I'm trying this And so if I go off frame, I do apologize, but you can understand what I'm doing and, and how I'm doing it. So it's not like I'm going to surprise you, you know, like I do a blue painter and, you know, pull out another miniature that's clearly been painted by someone else. Okay, so some of this metallic is going to need a second coat. And that's fine. Arthritis in my hand is starting to starting to cause my hand to cramp up a bit. All right, so that's that. I've still got to paint. Let's see the arm here. And this is very 30k armor wise. I'm not gonna lie, it reminds me a lot of um, 30k Death Guard, not 40k Death Guard. And so we're just gonna pay attention to the highlight because we're gonna be hitting that later with some steel and stuff later. Okay, now on the gun, I've got to get this orb thing back there and then the shoulder pads. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit more paint on my brush this time. Put it down on the wet palette. Again, I, I am using a wet palette, guys. So Don't worry about, you know, me thinning the paint. It's already technically thinned. And then I did use a flow improver in it. Again, the brushes and uh, the plinth are uh, gifts from my girlfriend who gifted them to me for Christmas. The wet palette is something I bought because it's something I've always had. I used a wet palette when I lived in America. I actually made my own wet palette um, with a Tupperware container, a sponge and some baking paper some wax paper so you don't have to buy expensive stuff I mean this is an army painter uh, wet palette not sponsored but I do like this this stuff not really had a chance to use their paints yet again don't be afraid to move the miniature all right so 
there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to do the upper shoulder pleurons and there's chest as well. So let's do the chest. So I'm going to use the side of the brush now and get this trim. I did mess up. Give me a second. See if I can rescue it real quick. There we go. I did rescue it. And like I said, just use the side of the brush. Don't and then on the fly itself. Just the tip. bits a bit finicky but you know it's your miniatures paint them your way you know, this is my miniature this is how I'm going to be painting my death guard army uh, I will be uh, trying to get back into playing but for now I think I'm more than content with just painting. See? Um. There we go. See? He's really starting to come around now. Okay, so then now we've got the mouth guard here. And the upper region there, like so. And then we've got the shoulder pleuron trim here. And we'll start on the other side. <clears throat> and again, I'm not worried about the teeth because I'm gonna go back over those. But because we're using really thin coats, we're not gonna get rid of, we're not gonna lose any detail. The detail is still gonna be there. So, grab it from behind now. Again, we're just putting we're just putting our primary colours in. That's all, just the primaries. And Death Guard are known for their bronzes and their greens and their nylocks. And again, I got these miniatures. These are the he's one of the um, Lord, whatever his name is, um, but I modified mine so that uh, it looks like this now. I did a custom conversion, did a head swap, and a few other things to the model to the miniature. He's going to be my my Chaos Sorcerer Lord in Terminator armor. So. He is going to be a miniature that I'm going to be spending quite a lot of time on. Excuse me. And these guys are his uh, bodyguards, if you will. And with me using a wet palette and the flow improver, I genuinely feel that the, um, the, the paint, the metallics, do flow a lot better. Um, 
so what I said about you know it not being personal it's 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 true it is true now again we've got to do the inside as well because don't forget miniatures are 3d which means we've got to because I'm left-handed we've got to flip this guy around and get the inside shoulder pad these may be easy to assemble but in actuality I should have I should have um, begun painting him before I assembled him it would make getting into certain areas a lot easier um, which is why I haven't um, which is why I haven't fully assembled this guy uh, he's another Chaos Lord in Terminator armor um, he's actually going to be um, a practice model I am a big fan of uh, Typhus Herald of Nurgle but I'm also a big fan of Mortyrion, so and hopefully Mortyrion will be the next big uh, purchase for my uh, Chaos Army next to a couple of uh, more Blight Drones maybe just some regular Chaos Space Marines okay so that's the gold majority done on him I might have to pick up pick out some more stuff later but that's the gold done on him so we're going to wash the brush very very much because we don't want any metal flakes and so now I'm going to go in with either Agrax Earthshade or contrast duck and hoof flesh um this would make it really really dark almost same as the brown is where this would just make it dingy so i'm just going to go with the i'm just going to go straight from the pot i'm not going to bother using my wet palette i'm just going to go straight from the pot and i am going to just hit the recesses of the fly for example it's really gonna darken down and grungy this bronze and we don't want it to pull in certain areas you know like before you know like with all things you just got to be careful Again, we'll run it across the upper highlight and the belly this will make the bronze stand out and then I'm gonna go in while this while the bronze is the wash Agrax wash is drying on the bronze I'm actually gonna go in and start doing some more highlights to the leather to make the leather stand out I was gonna start on the leather but I figured I'd be better off um, doing the bronze at least because in that way I've got a set idea of where I'm putting my uh, metallics now you could do the whole non-metallic if that's your jam it's not mine um, I mean, there are, I know some artists out there that are really good at doing non-metallic metals. Um, and they are pretty freaking awesome painters. Um, I am just not one of them. Alright. So, I am going to let that wash do its job as for the leather I am gonna go to XV 88 
And I'm actually going to go to a smaller brush. A much smaller brush. And I am going to... Just do some... straight up highlights I know some people would probably dry brush the leather and you could do that if that were, if that's your jam if that's your thing um, Not mine. I do have to do some dry brushing here in a bit though for the chain mail. And all we're doing is just setting up Simple, oh, sorry, all we're doing is setting up simple edge highlights. That's all we're doing. We're just getting the sides of the leather. That's all. Just the sides. If you want, you could do add a little bit of white into the XV88. And do some minor scratches if that's your jam it's not mine um, but you know that's just just saying that's what you could you could do Very bottoms of these. Down here. Just very gently. That's all we're doing is just simple little highlight lines, that's all. Make it look like the leather's been scratched and worn. Okay, so that's the leather done. Okay, so the uh, shade is starting to dry on the metallics. But I won't touch that yet, not for a, a while. Now we could go through with some Zendry dust for an ultra, ultra highlight on the leather. Now this is quite thick paint, so I'm probably going to have to wipe this on the... And then look where the light is on the model. For example, on these little very tassel tips there. Don't worry if you make mistakes. Part of painting miniatures is making mistakes. There we go. Just feathered that one in. Do 
just leave a little bit of the previous highlight layer left. There are dedicated highlighting brushes that you can buy, but it's really not worth it. Um, it's really not. You're best off just buying a straight up brush and learning to edge highlight separately. Practice. And remember, not every miniature you're ever going to do is going to look like it belongs in a Games Workshop Codex. You know? You're going to make mistakes. We all have to start somewhere. Okay. So now, I think we can get on with adding the Balthazar gold so now this is a very bright gold so I'm gonna whack it on our palette Twist the brush to get a really good tip. And then all we're going to do is just run it across certain areas. Now it may need one or two, you know, coats. But all we're doing is just making this first layer stand out a bit, that's all. And the reason why we're doing it on the trim the trim now is because we haven't done the teeth. And we're doing the teeth last because well You've got to go over those areas multiple times and you can afford to be a lot more. Now with the fly on his chest, I'm just going to go straight down the body. Just pick out the raised detail. And let the, the sculpt speak for itself. And I'm, I'm also, again guys, don't forget, we've still got some other little tricks up our sleeves on how to get on how to get this uh, death guard to pop a little bit more okay so there we go and now this little bottom knee pad down here I'm gonna focus our highlights mostly on the top that's where the light would hit it the most and a little more and also a lot down the bottom again because that's where the light would hit it there we go and then across the top here going to work on this gauntlet now remember the, that upper edge that was a bit and don't forget we're also going to add some nylox oxide to this too later on to really rust out this look so you can see the the tone difference between the two now the moment the light hits it the 
you see and that's what we're looking for that's that's what we're trying to, to achieve is a, is a light tone difference we're not looking to completely cover we're just looking to accent and accentuate That's all. Like the rivet there, we're going to keep that dark. Again, we're going to. Again, don't forget to move the model. Okay. And again, we're just going to So now we're just going to go around. Nice. Plague. Like. Orbs. And then we're probably going to give some of these a... a, a dry brush all right so nice that right there and then the actual orb on the weapon you can see the color change in it and that's what we're going for guys we're going for the there's still the original bronze underneath. But at the same time, we're going for my new bronze on top. There we go. Much, much better. I've actually noticed an area that I missed completely doing the uh, original bronze stage but no, no, that's fine we can go back in not a crime so I'm actually gonna close this up and go back to our original bronze Even though we've got some on our wet palette. And it's just across the ridge line here. I honestly thought it was a different part of the jaw. But there's actually a small differing line there. As you can see. So we're going to get that to... This is why I like working with wet palettes. Because even if you forget a colour, if you've still got it on your palette, you can just quickly grab it for a touch-up. There we go. Now we're going to let that dry. And then come back. And start putting down some more metallics so what I'm going to do is grab my lead belcher and I'm actually going to be using a bigger brush this is just for the weapon so this is a, uh, a size one brush 
gonna grab some lead belcher, put it on our wet palette. And again, this is just to paint the gun. So we're gonna This is the paint the gun. Roll over. Notice that there is a fly, like a bronze fly right there. That uh, we will definitely get later on. This is gonna take a couple of coats that's to be expected and so while we're doing this I am gonna just go over the miniature yeah roughly check out areas that I think could do with a bit of silver so like these little dots down here like little rivets again I'm just touching them to get some silver on it and then what I'll do is I'll go back later with a much more detailed uh, easier to control brush we'll put some nylock shade on these back here and make them look like they're uh, rusting away and you've got to be careful with paints like nylock shade because it's a technical paint it will uh, irrecoverably damage your brushes if you don't clean them I found many artists um, complaining that some of their very expensive brushes uh, got destroyed because they um, used a, te a GW technical paint and didn't clean their brushes properly yeah so okay now we're going to go back to the gun real quick and like I said it's going to take multiple coats because GW Silver has a hard time um, covering it up I do miss the original metallics that GW used to have like uh, bolt gun metal Things of that nature. Oh, sorry, my uh, uh, arthritis in my hand is really starting to <clears throat> remind me that it's still there. The arthritis, not the hand, of course. <laughs> but uh, I try to paint as often as I can. Where I can, when I can, which is why I enjoy the hobby. You know? So we are going to hit this with an Agrax Earth Shade, which will darken it a lot. In fact, I even have some um, Vallejo Game Wash which is just a straight black wash that I might hit it with and that will really darken this thing up you could use a GW base brush as well in fact that's what I think I might switch over to Come on. Let's 
been a while since I've used this brush. So I'm just going to feel the bristle still being a bit stiff but it has been a while since I've used this brush it was snowing here in England so I woke up this morning to a blizzard outside my window and I was like, uh, yeah, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> no, I had a bit of a lazy day. Instead of getting up at 6 a.m., I got up at uh, 7. I know, you're a lazy butt. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so. Uh, just going to try and get into this little part of the engine vent thing that I've done all right okay and what we can do is actually get down to this metallic on the skirt which I know that is Um, so that then when we hit that with a wash it's going to make those chain links pop Ooh. I'm also going to get uh, these hoses in the back now So that's that. Uh, now I'm actually going to switch over to a very detailed brush because there's a little bit of the miniature I need to get, and it's the silver around his eyes. So I'm actually going to be using a magnifying glass to do this because I can't find my glasses. So I do apologise if again if the miniature goes off uh, off camera. But I have to uh focus now, so So basically what I'm doing is his eyeballs. Before I put the lens on. There we go. And I'll, I'll actually touch up those rivets that I touched on earlier. There's some more rivets I can get up on here in his chest. Some of those I am going to get with 
No luck. I mean, I can start. And a bit of a slight silver tinge to the bronze. Make it look like scratches. Things of that nature. Actually, what I'm going to do around the Vox speaker on his face. Nicely done. All right, nicely done. All right. So next up is gonna be flash tones. So uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys, where we will be doing the flash tones uh, on the miniature. Most notably, uh, we will be doing some of the caving down here. I'm going to make those look like their uh, guts. I'm going to add some flesh tones to this cabling here. And uh, we'll probably start the teeth at that point. And then uh, add in some of the uh, neon green for the plague. So... Uh, yeah guys, uh, I hope you've been enjoying this video series, uh, I've been enjoyed doing them, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you in the next uh, video guys. So until then, take care, and uh, I'll see you on the table tabletop. Hi guys, welcome back to the painting video. Um, just a recap of what we've done. We have added the bronze and highlighted it. We've added the leather and highlighted it. And we've blocked off the majority of the gun. And we're about to hit it with a Agrax Earthshade Wash. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, along with some of the other silver on the miniature. We are going to darken it down now. I'm going to grunge it up as they say as the kids say and so we're gonna grab some some agrax earth shade and give it a good old shake <clears throat> there we go and then i'm gonna grab our water for cleaning our brush and i'm gonna be using a size five zero brushes it's quite small um, in fact, you know what? No, I'm actually going to swap out the brush and I'm going to use a size zero. So we're going to take some wash and then we're just going to apply it and not let it pull too much. Um, again, we're just going to try and darken the metal all we're trying to do add a little bit of dirt to it and if need be um 
I would suggest using a black wash if you have it. Uh, I do have one. Unfortunately, it leaves like this weird glossy sheen. Um, I don't know what that's about. Um, but it's from Vallejo, so I'm not sure if it's something with my batch or that's just how it is. But um, I very I I only, I only use it very sparingly. When I want to do like oil traces and stuff on an engine deck, on a tank, um, things of that nature. Now, we're going to go over this wash again later with um, some other colors too. So Again, this is just to, to bring the overall miniature down a few um, just a, a few tones that's all we're not looking to turn this thing into a okay, so we're gonna put some in this chain now okay, we're just looking to spread it Careful not to get any on your leather tabard. Unless you want to redo it all over again. And then to add some subtle variation on the fly on the chest, I'm actually going to add a little bit of a great earth shape, but only in the recesses. So example on the inside of the wings what that's going to do is going to darken up that chest maybe add a little bit to the bottom tray and this, the, the, the light didn't hit it so much use it very sparingly again we're just using it to change the variation tones we're not using it to You can see it's already started to darken up that metal a little bit by getting into all the recesses and whatnot. It's actually brought that gun out a lot. So we're going to add a little bit to this bronze to darken it. Again, it will. Now I'm working straight from the pot. I don't suggest you do this as a newbie, always use your wet palette, but I've been painting for quite a few years, so do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. Now I'm just going to take a quick one, one look over his eyes. over his eyes to bring him out just touch there we go and again this will bring out a lot of the And we're going to paint the eyes separately. In fact, I believe the eyes and the goo 
next to the skin is going to be next. So we're going to do the skin next. So we're going to wash out our brush. Put this in our pot. And now we're going to look at our flesh tone range. Um, now, I do like Vallejo flesh tone range. So this is what my girlfriend got me. This is for my Flames of War German army. Um, we've got a mix of different flesh tones. However, we're going to primarily stick with 40k paints today if we can um so i would start with something like a light flesh tone or I'll actually start with the um darker flesh tone the sa uh, the salmon flesh tone and then start working my way up from there but i am gonna start with Uh, we got Screamer Pink. Nagroth Knight. Umbian Purple. Uh, we do have some greens, but those are for the the puke. Of course, we've got some Lamian Medium because we're going to be thinning it down a little bit. So, but we've also got the typical Bugman's Glow. But I think I might go with Shanty Bone, uh, Pallid Witch Flesh, and... Do, 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 do. Rackard Flesh. We'll probably go with uh, Base, Mid, and then Highlight. So we're going to do a base of... Bugman's go. <clears throat> Let me give the paint a bit of a shake. You should always give your paints a shake. Always. Okay, we're going to be using a size 2 brush. I'm going to get a scoop of paint on my brush. I'm going to apply it to the wet palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on these cables and stuff down here. And this paint is very wet, very thinned. So I'm losing control of it, which isn't good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a spare brush I've got. I'm just gonna absorb the paint. Go back and use it a little bit less. Yeah, it's going to take a few coats. Okay, straight. It's a little bit too much water on my wet palette. That's what it is. Um, and we're going to go straight from this way. Again. You don't have to be super, super neat, but try to be as neat as you can. <coughs> and then we're going to make these look super, super gross. Someone's taking some guts. I just decided to use it as hose. Yeah, they're 
your weapon. Okay. It's gonna take a while to dry, so. Just have patience. Like so. And what I might do is make the next one more redder. So I'm going to do some washes paint at this brush. I'm going to grab some Mephiston red. Reason why is because we want a little bit of color variation. You want to break it up. You don't want it to. You don't want it to stand out and have this whole. You don't. Want it works for a space marine, like ultramarines, or, you know, um, Black Templar, or, um, uh, Crimson Fists, etc., etc. It works for them because their colour is their, their identity. With Death Guard, technically Death Guard Green is their colour of identity, but at the same time, you can um, you can add a bit of identity into your noble army, and just be careful not to touch the flesh that you've done earlier. And don't worry, we will be doing more of this with a with a few other colours. So but all we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of colour variation. We've still gotta add our pox marks and, and boils and whatnot that's on most Nurgle miniatures, but at the same time, we've also still got to add the teeth and do a whole bunch of other stuff. So, this is why I said to you um, in a previous video you miniatures like this sometimes are better off painted in a sub assembly, and this is one of the reasons why. So we've added a little bit of different color variation in the back. And that's a good thing. I mean, color variation is a good thing. Alright. Now the front wash is dried. So what we could do is we could go through with some... Go back to our primary color on the weapon. That give the time for the flesh to to dry. And you always want to make sure that you close the back of the neck. Of the small back you want to make sure you get that neck otherwise air will still get in and ruin your paints. Um, so we can go back over it with lead belcher. And just do a, a little simple panel highlight. Certain areas. Look at where the light is actually hitting the miniature as you're painting it. You want to use the side of your brush. Uh, 
at all. And we just want to leave those recesses where they're at. Now I haven't painted this fly because this fly is going to get painted something special. Um, I haven't purposely left it out on purpose. I've left it there because again I wanted to paint that fly something special. Same as this fly here. Um, I want to paint those two um, flies very separately and, and, and something special. So with this little spike I like to go along the edge. The edge will stick out. And of course then we're going to go over this with some nylock. Make it look rusted. And then we've still got a this is just we've still got another another highlight to do. For example on the Vox breather here, we're just gonna hit the upper ledge edge there and a little bit along the cabling. Leaving all the recesses to be like uh, on the back here we all oh, we didn't hit it with a wash did we see sometimes you learn you find out by doing so I'm gonna grab this agrax earth shade and a smaller brush because I just want to be very precise where I put this wash Washes can make or break a miniature. Um, if you put a wash in the wrong place, it will make or break a miniature. I'm not even kidding. I have flipped tables because a wash uh, got away from me. Uh, granted, I was a lot younger back then. I think I was like uh, 16, 17 at the time. And uh, I just started doing work experience for Games Workshop. Um, I was like a lucky weekend boy. Uh, GW no longer does uh, uh, work experience programs, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it, it was fun. Uh, I just stopped shelves and painted the odd miniature. I was basically the lackey that did all the coffee runs and things of that nature. And that's fine. Every work workplace has a lackey. See now, now we can actually hit these hoses with the same wash, and you're going to see big difference. I'm also going to hit the pink of flesh with a Nurgle wash. Give it a subtle green hue, and in that way. It looks like it's infected organs. And again, the, the fly is going to get painted much later on when I do the teeth. I haven't forgot him. Same as this connector here. This connector here is going to get painted last. There are just certain things I like to do um, last because same as this buckle the buckle is going to get painted last as well because the amount of washes and whatnot that's about to go on and other effects and stuff that i'm gonna start trying to do i just i wanted to um do it separately kind of thing all right so now we're gonna let these washes that washes dry Done, we've done a basic highlight don't worry about the black in here again because this is going to get a, a special uh, a Nurgle treatment um, same as the orbs on the inside of the brass which is why I'm not really focused on the brass right this second 
But what I can focus on actually is doing the green the green um pustules and stuff and whatnot. So uh, let me get a quick sip of me coffee. Because you know it's like seven in the morning here in the UK. Now, normally, you could start with a base of Death Guard Ring. Now, I suggest you do. That way, if you bugger up, you can actually go back and cover it up. But, we fly by the seat of our pants here. Yeah, Malavik to Zinc. And so, I'm actually not going to bother with any of that. I'm actually just going to go with a straight uh, Liberal Green. I'm going to give it a shake. Now, this is the first time I'm reopening this paint. Oh god, this thing is thicker than concrete. So what I'm going to do is, um, as you can see, the paint is really, really thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some flow improver. Not much, just like a capful. Like so. Literally just a capful. This flow improver has lasted me about four, six months. Put the lid back on and give it another good shake and now now you can actually um, and now you can um, apparently my microphone won't work in this entire recording yay so i'll do an over a uh overlay yeah so we just added some flow improver to this paint and this paint has been sitting on the shelf for a couple of months so you always want to give your paints a really good shake so we have we've added some flow improver to it now look at that that is like butter much better so now it will go on the miniature a lot smoother so what we're going to do is grab our miniature and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a base of this down on the gun here and because we've added flow improver to it i really don't think it's going to need going on the wet palette so in fact no it's not i can tell by the way it's just going on this nicely now i believe this is a it's a base base layer paint so it, it is a little bit thicker than normal so you would have to water it down anyway but i like to use a flow improver more than water um i mean you could use water as well as a flow improver but you then lose control like we did earlier on the flesh tone um but we did manage to clean that up and so what we're doing is we're just setting up this base layer this is going to be our base layer this green now we do have some odd coat as well so we're going to hit up all the gross guts and stuff later and even the lenses with some odd coat get a little bit of a shine to them to make them look like lenses and stuff so Now, if I want to do start doing glow effects, I'm going to have to get some more paints. Because, again, I'm only on a limited budget and a limited space, guys. So. But I just wanted you to. See what. You know, what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to do the back of the weapon. Now. A lot of people will be cringing at this, and you can cringe, but what I like to do is I like to start doing the inside. And if you get it on the bronze, don't worry, because we've got more bronze to cover it back up. So if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. Normally, again, like I said, I would paint the bronze last. But since it's a primary color on the miniature, I figured, eh, we'll get it done. 
Now be careful not to get it on the teeth because we are going to be painting the teeth stone cold large because there's a lot of little buggers and they're in the way of certain things. Now some people would um, prefer to paint their pus yellow. Um, as a person who's actually worked in a mortuary, I've seen dead bodies up close that have been, let's just say left to the elements. And some pus is yellow, yes. And some pus is green, some pus is actually black. And you don't want to know what it smells like. Let's just say, the closest smell to it is somebody who hasn't changed their socks in a couple of weeks. That foot cheese smell only ramped up to about a thousand. Okay, so... That's our base coat down. Now that there's a little bit too much inside this ball. And like before, we're gonna grab one of our brushes. I've got these spare throwaway brushes that I just use for absorbing excess paint. There we go. That's all they're for. They're just for absorbing excess paint and putting down PVA glue and technical paints so I don't destroy my good paint, my good brushes. I mean, I got those brushes from Amazon for like £1.50 free shipping. So, like I said, they're not meant for anything. So we're going to let that paint dry. And while that paint is drying, actually, we're going to go back and look at the flesh tones and the red. Okay. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit it up with some uh, Druki Violet and some um, uh, a Shonian Camo Shade. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it a pinkish green um, hue. And I have a specific brush that I like to do this with. Um. It's a size one. Ah, silly miniature. Stop being knocked over. It's a one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a little bit of Druki Violet. Sorry, uh, Camo uh, Camo Shade. Put it on the wet palette. Wash our brush. Then take some of the Druki Violet and mix the two together and I'm going to hit the organs and as you can see it does this weird purplish brown green hue combo And then I'm just going to do a straight droogie on the red. And what this is going to do is going to, in essence, almost turn it pink. And this is where your other colors can come in and do their thing and like this one down here I'm just going to hit with a straight chameleon shade green which is going to give it a really lovely green puke tone you gross yeah you like gross we know gross we love gross like so 
going to let that shade dry. So now we're actually going to go back to working on the gun. So we're going to put our caps back on our shade so we don't spill any. Remember, we've got them. Keep your workplace, your, your workspace clean and tidy. So now we've got a contrast color. We've got Warp Lightning. Okay. Now, this is the first time I'm actually using this contrast color. So bear in mind, it might do good. It might do horrible. I don't know. It is quite pigmenty. Wow, that is a lot of pigment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit, throw it on the wet palette. And then I'm going to do the front of the weapon. Oh, wow. That is green, my man. That is making leprechauns jealous green. Jeez. Oh, what a tart, 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 tart. Would you look at that now? It's actually getting me a pot of gold. Now that is a green. Holy crap, GW. I know the light's not doing it justice, but dang, this thing is green. Oh, it's like a jag racing green. It's beautiful. I love it. So, oh, we've got a little bit on the left there. Like I said, you know, no biggie. You can just wipe it. No, gore isn't exactly the cleanest. It's not like they're night lords. Yeah, I'm throwing shots. Just kidding, night lords. So we've got the so it's actually got a nice colour. Um we'll try and get a little bit on the sides there too. Nice. Now this smoke at the top, um I'm not sure how I want to do that. I'm not going to do greens. Greens would be easy. Um, I might do like a, a like a bellowing black smoke, maybe. I'm not sure yet. But we're going to let that dry on the weapon. And yeah, the glaze is majority done on. Or well, the wash is still a little bit wet on the back there so we're going to come back to this um, once that's all dry and then after that actually you know what no I am going to do the eye I like this green I'm going to try it straight up and try and get the center eye Hmm. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Did I? Not too shabby at all. And we're going to rotate it around the back. As you can see. There we go. Not too shabby at all. Not too shabby. Okay, so we did get the center eye done. All right, so now let's take a look. We do have the teeth, um, but I'm just waiting on the rest of this model to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come back to this in about half hour, and uh, then we can continue on with the weapon. Maybe you know what? No, um, let's add some. 
Nylox hide. Um, here it is, Nylox Oxide. Now again, this is a technical paint, so you've got to be really careful with this, guys. It will destroy your brushes. Sorry about that. It will destroy your brushes if you are not um, careful. So, again, I've not opened this pot before. It's actually quite thin. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab one of my lesser brushes I'm gonna work on the tip giggity no, I'm not happy with that tip come on but that's much more better so we're just gonna go a little bit and we're just gonna start Apparently this stuff is pretty harsh. Again, less is more, guys. You don't have to dump the entire thing. splotches in certain places, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, let me just adjust the camera angle a bit. There we go. So yeah, I'm just... I'm stippling it. So we're just throwing it in little areas where I think it would pull rust line. And so we've added some Nylock to it now. There we go. So you guys can see it better. 
ready to gentle highlight and nail up. I'm going to wash out this brush. Again, technical paints are very brutal on your brushes because they have like pigments and, and sand and whatnot in them. And so, if you're not using your right brush, it will. Uh, if you don't take take care of the brush, it will it will seriously hurt it. Okay, so now what we could do is we could go over the green that we've put in with some art coat. That would give it a bit of a gloss uh, finish, same as the lens. But I'm actually going to think about starting on the bone and the teeth, because um, I think that would add, that would bring some colour into it. Um, actually, you know, no, I'm going to go through one more quick um, uh, Ethonian camo shade wash on the organs on the back. Only this time I'm hitting it in the specific recesses. And what that's going to do is give it that green hue I was telling you about. This model doesn't really have a lot of pustules. Um, it's only got like one or two that I've seen. Um, which is quite weird for Nurgle because normal Nurgle's covered in pustules. But we will make said pustule stand out that's for sure so, like I said we're just giving the flesh a, a pseudo poisoned look okay so let that dry while that's drying I'm actually going to look at what I've got for Bone, I've got Ushanti Bone, Ceramite White for the final highlights. So I guess we could go over and with Ushanti Bone, let's give it a shake. Okay, okay so we're going to start doing the teeth. And like the um, like the uh, trim, we're going to start at the bottom and work our way around. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a base layer of Ushanti bone down. I would start with a brown. In fact, that's what I'm probably going to do. start with I'd start with a rich brown um, what have I got what have I got what have I got more fang brown brown's too light you know what? yeah I'll start with more fang Just remember to take your time. Okay, more on his feet. Just remember at this point, just take your time. You've used patience this entire time don't rush it you know if your hands cramp up take a break go have a cup of coffee watch a TV show you know it'll give the paint time to dry it'll give your mind time to think so you know just take a break you know yeah, 
this one here's in an awkward position. Again, normally I would paint certain parts of this miniature in sub-assembly. The body being one of them. Okay, so we hit it with the more flat frame. Again, we want to start with a dark base. Again, I'm sorry if the miniature goes out of frame, guys. Now, the teeth on the kneecap, I'm going to leave till last because I want to paint the mouth on the inside. Um, so I'm going to leave those, those teeth till last because there's no point in me repainting the teeth twice over. Um, so now we're going to do the ones on his hip. Again, we're just putting a base of Mong Fang Brown down. This is a good base to start adding uh, different bone colors and layers and whatnot. I learned that from um, Duncan Rhodes. Duncan's a good guy. I met him once. studio thing and uh, good guy really good guy probably doesn't remember it and again don't forget sometimes just take a step back and take a look at what you're doing you know time is on your side my friends time is on your side remember we paint miniatures for our own peace of mind. Sometimes we paint miniatures for stress relief. Sometimes we paint miniatures to just say, "Hey, we've paint. I've painted that miniature." Um, I, for the longest time, I think it was like from between third and fourth edition uh, codexes, just stopped playing altogether and just painted. Um, I had an orc army, an imperial guard army, a tau army, um, necron army. I just, hell, I even had a vampire counts and a uh, chaos warband fantasy army. I just started practicing um, to get better techniques, to just get better overall as a painter and whatnot and and in general it, it it paid off. It really did. Um so now we're gonna do the teeth on the shoulder pad. Gonna do these small ones first. Being careful with the trim and the nylox hide that we've added. If you're wondering about the base color, it's actually um, wraith bone with a uh, wash of. Uh, Athonian camo shade. And let's 
my landlord's cleaner. Again, we're just putting down some base brown. Then we're going to hit it with uh, some specific colors. And make these stand out. See, what, what some people would do is just hit it with a black wash. And then just dry brush. And that, that, that works. You know, that does work. Now, I am using a more precise tipped brush than what most people would use for painting this, but like I said, I'm just how you paint your miniatures and how I paint my miniatures is uniquely up to us. We put some more paint on this black panel. And that's ultimately it. It's uniquely up to us. Now, again, don't forget you can move the miniature with my dudes. Do that. And I know this is like, well, that's a lot of brown. Yep, but don't worry. You know the old saying? It was darkest before the dawn. Unless your name is Dawn. Okay. So we just, like I said, I'm just getting the base colored down. On these fangs, which is why I left them to, to last now while I'm waiting on those to dry I'm actually going to go back and hit up this um, flesh tone back here these two I do have some uh, screamer pink now, it's awfully thick but I'm not going to water it down I'm, not gonna. I'm just going to take it straight to the palette and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch it in certain areas. And what this is going to do is literally give it the illusion that it's guts. As for the first flesh cable, I'm actually going to go to Rackard, uh, Rackard Flesh. I would go back and do a Bugman's, uh, a Bugman's Glow on it, but I feel like it can get away with doing a, a Rackard Flesh on it. Again, over to the wet palette. And then just all we're going to do is hit it in specific spots. That's all. We're going to leave the little yellow tinge and the and the purple tinge and whatnot where they're at. do disgusting guts. Okay. Now I'm going to go through with some where are they? Some lead belcher. I'm actually going to move my magnifying glass for a second because I have to. 
this is where I genuinely need to like focus on the miniature so I do apologize guys if I go out of frame but there's these little steel bands well I can assume they're bands but gonna go back and touch them up. Don't want to make a mistake, don't worry. Just like so. And again, this is just gonna be a base. So I'm gonna go up. Um, there's maybe some rune fang steel afterwards. Again, this is where I normally would pull the miniature like right up to my face. But because I'm doing a YouTube video, I can't. This is the finicky part of doing 40k miniatures. Am I doing this to any particular standard? Um, no, I'm just painting it because, well, that's what I want to do. Um, I paint my miniatures to my standard. It's not necessarily tabletop, it's not necessarily tournament, it's my standard. Um, and that's the only way I can, it's the only way I can really uh, put it. To some, it's me. To others, it's over the top. But again, I I majority paint now more than play. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't get the urge once in a while. Of course I do. That'd be silly if I didn't. Okay, so. We've got the base silver down on that fly, and now we're going to get the base silver down on the other fly. These flies are actually going to be bronze. It's to break up the um, the colour. And just like all metallic paints, you want to wash your brushes thoroughly. Because you don't want any metallic flakes inside your brush ruining the next colour that you want to use. What I do is I, I even inspect it. And if I see any kind of mirroring or flaking or whatever, I immediately wash the brush again, and then again, and then again. All right, so we've done half the, the teeth. We finished up the majority of the back with a few other things that, that needs to be left to do. So I'm gonna knock those out now. So I'm gonna grab this Avalon Sunset. Give it a good old shake. And I'm going to grab a really, really, really fine tip. This is like a 5-0, this tip. No, actually, you know, no, I'm just going to grab a flat 3-0 tip. Grab this Avalon Sunset. I don't need to put it on the... Because there's only one boil. Literally, there's just one boil. And that's it. <laughs> he only has a little one boil. There we go. Okay. So 
this is done with Evelyn Sunset. So this is where we're at so far. So I'm going to finish off the rest of the basin, the rest of the teeth, and then uh, we'll move on from there. Actually, I might hit the back with a little bit of room fang steel, actually. Then too much medium in there. So one thing I do like about this dinner um, from um, Acrylic from Windsor Newton, it works with GW min uh, Metallics. If you try to add water to the Metallics, um, the Metallics just separate like crazy and flake, and yeah, it just doesn't look good. That's where you get a little bit of flow improver. You're good. I know Vallejo does a really good flow improver. Wow, I actually think I'm going to have to stir this. Wow, this paint's actually died. Check it out, guys. This paint's actually died. Wow. This is going to take a lot of shaking. But not too bad. I mean, right now you could finish off the, the teeth and uh, base it and. And call it a good one and just use it you know um, but what I might do is um, paint the inside of the mouth on that knee now while I'm waiting for this there we go <laughs> took a lot of bit a lot of shaking but we finally got it okay so again all I wanted to do is a little bit of a a weird little highlight. Just where the light's hitting it, that's all. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do insane all that paint shaking for two seconds a year <laughs> thanks gw <laughs> right so i'm just moving them the, the light real quick all right so where are we at our oh, teeth that's right uh, no mouth i wanted to do the mouth so what i'm gonna do um i do have a pink and i have a purple now these aren't GW paints. These are not GW paints. Um, so what I'll probably do add a Mephiston red into the into the knee first. So 
see, this is why I didn't paint the teeth, because I knew the Mephiston red would get on the teeth. And what I'll do is I'll add some scream of pink whilst the Mephiston red is still a little bit wet. this sugar pen way too much paint on the tip there for this one and we just want to up <laughs> there we go now I should be using a base layer brush for it Fill in these two. Keep them on firm ground. I know some people will be like, I would just dry brush them. And you could, like I said, you could dry brush them. Um, but then you'd have a lot of armor cleaner afterwards. And seeing how this color I've made for my Death Guard army is something you can't put in a bottle and use for touch up uh, that means um, that means dry brushing is just not a viable viable way of um, painting the teeth if that makes any sense there's a lot of teeth a lot of teeth, a lot of bone, but not a lot in the way of pustules. So I think he'd be make, he'd make an orc happy with the amount of teeth he's got. But I don't think he's making Nurgle happy because he's only got the one zit, unless he's got uh, some sort of acne cleaner. Got a base coat down. Oh no! Wait, the teeth on his face, not his chest. Good spot there, viewer. For a while there, I honestly thought I was painting an orc miniature with all this green and all these teeth.
this is the tedious part of painting images. You just want rank and file. You know, that's one thing, but these guys are supposed to be these guys are supposed to stay. And again, we're not looking for full coverage because if you look at teeth and, and horns and whatnot, they're not all full, full colored brown. Uh, there's actually speckles and spots and a whole bunch of other stuff. Going on here. So that's what we're doing. Like I said, I'm not looking to try and get full coverage. Because if you've ever looked at an animal's horns, case in point of deers or the mooses, they're not all uniform colour. And believe it or not, hunters actually uh, they ignore deer with uniform coloured horns in animals. Bow hunt. I lived in America. All right, so we're almost done with the teeth. Jeez, this is going to be one. Lo yeah, it's already an hour long, guys. So this is probably where I'm going to after this. I'm going to end the video, and we'll come back to these teeth. All right, guys. So uh, what have we done? Recap. We have. Started the weapon and got it done to a point where we can field it on the tabletop. We are going to finish off the knee uh, last. Uh, we were going to finish off with the flies. We've done one of the three lenses on the face. We've done some highlights. We've done some ultra highlights. Um, we've also figured out you know, what we're going to do with the back. So we're just going to do the horns, some ultra highlights on certain parts of the armor, and then the smoke, and then base the miniature. And uh, yeah, uh, we're also going to put some uh, art coat on the uh, green. So look forward to seeing that. That's going to be fun. Um, it's going to make that that uh, chaos pus uh, um, gleam. So yeah, guys, I'll uh, see you all in the next video, guys. So uh, take care, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I've got some touch-ups to do to the miniature, most notably um, the pus on the weapon. Um, when I was cleaning, I noticed that I accidentally touched it with the I was going to take a few coats. In fact, I might have to go back with the main main green and. And again, this isn't Games Workshop green, but it, look how bright that is. Wow, that is bright here. There you go. That is bright. It is a bright neon green. Um, and it's it's just it's amazing. It is a bright green. And so what we're doing is we're just accenting what we've already done.
Listen to that bright green, I love it. And the actual cover is pretty good too for a non branded um, paint. I mean, this paint I got in a uh, Amazon paint set. see what I'm talking about this is a beautiful green oh my god where's this green been all my life it is beautiful so now when I hit that with the hard coat it is just gonna oh cherry and cherry I'm gonna put the cap back on this green now. I've got to put these green. I've got to put these paints into like proper dropper bubbles, because these are just oh, this green. Look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, love it. All right. So where's my hard coat? Uh, technical, technical hard coat. There we go. Technical hard coat. Again, I'm gonna use a junkie brush. I don't really care about. bonk and headbutt the microphone sorry about that guys again I'm just putting it on the pus because I want this to just look like it's dripping wet and this is going to finish glossy that's what I want um, I do suggest that you have a, like a, a matte varnish as well Right, so we're going to let that dry, the hard coat. And because we're not going to go anywhere near those sections of the miniature, we can look at... Uh, actually, you know, I could put some hard coat in that mouth. So now what I'm going to do is probably start working on the teeth. I might later on add a bit of hard coat to the organs to make them look like they're still wet. The smoke up top, I'm still not decided on what I want to do with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some ooh, shanty bone. 
I would normally use bleach bone, but bleach bone no longer exists. Thank you, GW. So we're going to grab some of this. I'll throw it on our wet palette. Get a nice fine tip. Don't forget guys, after this we're going to hit it with a wash. What we're doing is just lightening the area up first. Because like I said, this is why most people say, oh, I would just dry brush it. And, and again, you could, if that's what you want to do, you could just dry brush it. need to apply two coats. And if you do, you do. It's all good, guys. Remember, just take your time. You've got all the time in the world. Unless you're a commission painter, in which case you've got to hurry. And sacrifice... Unless you've got some really good customers that understand that. You know, the best takes time. I've lucked out and had some really good um, customers. two or three coats on certain horns. That being one of them. The one on his hand is going to be another one. I can just tell. Yep. This is the point where I'd usually put on some music and just chill, but can't do that anymore. Because of uh, copyright and you want to go to prison? What, for playing a fucking song? I'm sorry, but is music not meant to be listened to? Am I the only one that doesn't seem to understand that? Okay, so we're getting a bit of ahead of ourselves, so I'm just going to do one side of the body kind of thing. So we're going to do the teeth and the chest. And these eyes are going to get hit with a wash. So. Just picking out the tips. Because the wash is going to fill in the base. Now the bigger um, T 
safe slash pause. Those are going to need a little bit more extra love. And that's fine. The more prominent for a reason. Either the sculptor said, you know what, this is what I want. And GW agreed. Or the sculptor was hiding a mistake. Don't be surprised. Even sculptors... You know, they make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I said all we're doing is just getting a primary color down because the wash is going to take up most of the rest we may have to retouch up certain teeth and that's fine if you do I'm using my thumb to steady my hand and not the miniature. said I, I have a weird style of painting but it works for me that's all that matters right guys is that it works I'm going to have a little bit more paint put on my palette because okay, like I said tips of these as well a lot of them on this miniature as far as it, trying to leave these buggers to last well as close to last as I can okay the art coach dried now on that minute and a half I looks beautiful it looks so good in person We're just 
got some claws. things I have to touch up. was bugging me. <laughs> okay, so what I might do is paint that smoke now and I'm just going to use some shades. I will be using the aggro reserve shade for the fa for teeth. Um, so I'm gonna grab my GW about 45 minutes for the shade to dry so all I'm doing is just moving it to where I want it We're going to go over it one more time with um, contrast warp lightning, but I'm going to mix it down with some Lamia Needham. Alright, so now I am going to do the teeth on the knee. And so I'm going to need. Yay! Moonfang Brown! Come on down! Da -da -da. Actually, no, I'm going to use XV88. I'm going to make these teeth stand out. Mm-hmm. 
is hit. Um, I need my retributor uh, armor. Do, 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 do. Almost forgot how the little flies. Papa Nurgle would never forgive me. So now we see that. Alright, so now we can wash the bones. We're going to use Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade. Of shade. And I'm going to use a GW starter brush for this. Shloop. I'll put some on my palette. And literally all it is is just. I'm just going to drag it across. I might go over it later on with a dark wash, but there we go. And all it does is it immediately. Unifies the, the bone. Oh, shall we unify the fear? Boom. Unify it. And you can probably pick it out with a little bit of ceramite white if you really want to go that hardcore. Oh, we've missed some actual bones. Oh, God, we have. We've missed them on this leg. And on the weapon, oh no. Yeah, we can go back and fix that. That is not a problem. Okay, we're just gonna put it on the other base. And just let it do its job. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna separate and highlight the teeth and the it's just going to draw your eyes that's all it is before you know it Could do this with a dark wash, like a black wash. Um, but I prefer to use Agrax. You could use noon oil, noon oil if you've got it. I do have some, but like I said, I don't like using it on uh, specific things. <coughs> there we are. It. So we've got some bones on this leg and this weapon to catch up and finish off. So. Go back to our ocean bone. In fact, I've got some on my palette. So.
and you don't have to be super super neat because the wash is going to do a lot of the work for you just want a little bit of your shanty bone slash bleach bone on the tips just going to let the, um, the wash do the rest of the work. It's a lazy way of doing bone, but it works effectively. I learned that from doing two 2500 plus. Skeletons. Yeah, it was like it was like three thousand point undead. And a friend of mine was getting rid of a whole bunch of skeletons. And so I picked them up for you know. mistake I'd made. And I was like, oh god, someone kill me now. It was a lot. And I mean a lot of skeletons. Alright, so you now we the wash on this one up here is a little bit darker than I'd like. So I'm just gonna there we go. And there. Bone is majority done. I've just got to finish off the smoke. A little bit, a few things to do on his face. Face and miniature. I'm gonna. We're working on his knee now. Um, oh, that's not right. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna grab some lamy and medium. And I'm actually going to grab it from a clean brush. I'm going to do it five to one. Wash this brush. You always want to take care of your brushes. Right, so now we're going to finish off this knee, and so we're going to have to grab some camera shade and a really fine tip brush. So we're looking at maybe a three zero. In fact, I'm even going to give the shade a bit of a jiggle. run it in between the two. And what that's going to do is 
connect in with your computer. Area. And then we'll go here. And we'll put the there. And then we're going to let the wash, all the wash and the shade dry. Back to it, and we'll put a little bit on the fly so we can bring up the recess detail. Base it. Go nurgling on there. But I'm going to let that dry. And uh, yeah, so this is where we're at, guys. I'm going to move the light a little bit for you. So there we go. It's one of my Death Guard Terminators. And there you go, guys. You can do it. It's all about just chipping away a bit, a bit, a bit. I might go back and touch up certain bits here and there, but other than that, Base the miniature, throw an ergling on there. In fact, I think I've got a little nurgling right here. Here we go. Of course, I've got to paint the little bugger. But, you know. Yeah, throw an ergling on there, and. Yeah, I've got tons of nerglings. this one holding a little um, stick grenade but yeah you can do it guys um but yeah there is one death guard terminator you can join the rest of your army like Light drones. And your other chaos. Death Guard. do it. Um, I'm currently in the process of painting up my uh, 
other ones. But here is my Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Um, he's going to be freaking awesome when he's done. Uh, so yeah, I look forward to seeing that one, guys. He is going to be one badass by the time I'm done with him. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this video series. If you did, if you want to see more, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, and until then guys, happy painting, and uh, see you on the tabletop. Ciao guys.